Welcome back to the chain rule part two here. We're going to look at the second version of the chain rule and there's going to be some times when you have to use the second version so I, I encourage you to learn both. Uh, notice here u is a function of x, right? u equals g of x and y is a function of u, y equals f of u. So you can think of the composition uh, written in this, in this way, it actually helps when you're using this version of the chain rule x goes to u and u goes to y. The second version of the chain rule says if you want to find the derivative of y with respect to x, you multiply dy du times du dx. And that's why it's called the chain rule. Uh, and I'll, I want to point out right, right away that these two versions are saying the exact same thing. Look, if, if u equals g of x, then what is du dx? Isn't it g prime of x? So this factor here, g prime of x, is exactly the same thing as this factor here, du dx. Furthermore, if y equals f of u, what is dy du? Isn't it f prime of u? But, but what is u? u is g of x. So you get f prime of g of x. So this factor, dy du, is exactly the same thing as this factor, f prime of g of x. Furthermore, uh, since y is f of u and u equals g of x, y equals f of g of x, which is exactly what we're calling capital F of x, so what is dy dx, the derivative of y with, with respect to x, is the same thing as capital F prime of x. So these two versions of the chain rule are saying the exact same thing. Let's look at this example. You're given y equals 5 over u squared, u equals 9 minus 2x squared, and you want to find um, dy dx. Well, if you think of it this way, isn't u a function of x and isn't y a function of u? If you want to find dy dx by the chain rule, it's equal to dy du times du dx. So to find dy dx, all you have to do is um, find each of these two. Well, what is, what is, um, what is dy du? If y equals uh, 5 over u squared, which can be written like this, the derivative becomes negative 10 u to the negative third, which is negative 10 over u to the third. And what is uh, du dx? Well, if u is 9 minus 2x squared, du dx is negative 4x. So when you paste those two together, you get this. And then we we're going to write our answer in terms of x. The reason is because dy dx seems to imply that we, we want to have the derivative of y with respect to x, so we're going to have it in terms of x. The second part of this problem, they want you to find dy dx when x equals 2. That just is a notational thing. That's, that, that's what this thing means. It just, it just means to plug in 2 everywhere there's an x. So when you take the formula from part A and plug in 2 everywhere, it simplifies to 80. This one I think is kind of hard. Uh, you're given these derivatives, dg dr when r equals 8 is negative 12, dg dt when t equals 2 is 4, r of 2 is 8, and they want you to find dr dt when t equals 2. My advice is to ask yourself what's a function of what? This last derivative seems to imply that r is a function of t, this derivative seems to imply that g is a function of r, so this seems like a reasonable choice to write r as a function of t and g as a function of r. So when you take the derivative by the chain rule, dg dt, which is this derivative, is equal to dg dr times dr dt. Now notice, dg, dg dt when t equals 2, since dg dr is a function of r, what is the value of r when t equals 2? Well, this says that r of 2 is 8. So uh, saying dg d t dr when t equals 2 is precisely the same thing as saying dg dr when r equals 8. These two, those two things mean the same thing. And then, then um, times the derivative of r with respect to t when t equals 2. And you're given dg dr when r equals 8 is negative 12. And you're given that the derivative of g with respect to t when t equals 2 is 4. When you divide by negative 12, you get that dr dt when t equals 2 is negative one-third. This one I think is a little easier. This uses version 1 of the chain rule. It, capital F of t is, is little f of g of t. If you just differentiate with using the chain rule, you get that big F prime of t is f prime of g of t times g prime of t. So you want to find f prime of 4. So you just plug in 4 everywhere there's a t. Simplify. Now, g prime of t is given to be negative 2 and g of 4 is given to be negative 6. And then they also give you that f prime of uh, negative 6 is equal to 10. So you've given just enough information to finish the problem. Final answer is negative 20. Let's do a couple more. 
this one, you have a mountain climber that is um, climbing a mountain. And um, you're climbing the mountain at 0.5 kilometers per hour. That's a derivative. Look at the units really carefully. If h is the height of the mountain climber, then you could say dh dt is 0.5 kilometers per hour. Meanwhile, the temperature is decreasing by 6 degrees Celsius per kilometer. That's a derivative too, but look at the units. Uh, if, if A is the air temperature, then uh, DADH, that's what this is, DADH is negative 6 kilometers, uh, six degree, negative 6 degrees Celsius per kilometer. And what do they want you to find? They want you to find the rate at which the air temperature is changing with respect to time. They want you to find DADT. The key to these kinds of problems is to figure out what's a function of what. Since they give you dh dt and the adh, doesn't it make sense to think of h as a function of t and a as a function of h? So when you use the chain rule on this, dadt, which is what they want you to find, is the adh times the h dt. Plug in the information that's given. Notice the units cancel, the kilometers cancel, and you get degrees, negative 3 degrees Celsius per hour. What does that mean? That would mean that... Um, as the mountain climber is climbing the mountain, the temperature is going down 3 degrees Celsius for every hour. Let's look at this one. Suppose Wayne is uh, throwing a stone. He throws a stone into a lake and the stone forms a water ring. If the radius of the ring is increasing at a rate of 2 feet per second, okay, that's, that's dr dt, if r is the radius. Find how fast the area inside the ring is changing after 3 seconds. So they want you to find the adt. So you're given that the RDT is 2 feet per second, and they want you to find the ADT when t equals 3. What would the relationship be among these vari variables? Doesn't it make sense that r is a function of time, r is a function of the radius? So the chain rule here would say the ADT equals the ADR times the RDT. Now you want to find the ADT when t equals 3. We do not know what, well we know what the RDT is, how do you find what the ADR is? Well, this is, the, this is the rate of change of the area with respect to the radius of a circle. They don't tell us that. We're supposed to remember that for a circle, the area is pi r squared. So the ADR is 2 pi r. And the units would be square feet per foot. So the units would be feet. Okay, so, so they don't tell us that. We're just supposed to remember that. So if you want to find the ADT when t equals 3, notice when t equals 3, since the radius is increasing at 2 feet per second, doesn't r equal 6? So when t equals 3, r is 6. So they want, they want you to find the ADR when r equals 6. And the RDT is 2. So what is the ADR when r equals 6? Isn't it 12 pi? 12 pi feet? So you plug in 12 pi feet here, multiply times 2 feet per second, your final answer would be 24 pi square feet per second. Let's see, I think we've got time for one more. This problem is kind of similar to the last one we just did. Um, suppose you have the edge of a cube. It's increasing at 4 inches per minute. So that's a, that's a derivative. If x is the edge of the cube, like that, then uh, doesn't it make sense to say that dx dt is 4 inches per minute? The question is how fast is the volume changing when the edge is 10 inches? So they want you to find dv uh, dt when x equals 10. So again, the key to these kinds of problems is to figure out what's a function of what. Um, since, since they give you the rate dx dt, doesn't it make sense to think of x as a function of time? And also, the volume of a cube is a function of the, side, is the length of the edge. You should know what that formula is. The, 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 the formula is um, v equals x cubed, right? Anyway, so when you use the chain rule here, you get dv dt equals dv dx times dx dt. You want to find dv dt when x equals 10. They give you dx dt, they don't give you dv dx. You're supposed to be able to figure that out. Well, look, folks, if you, if you know that v equals x cubed, dv dx means the derivative of the volume with respect to x, so it's, it's 3x squared. So furthermore, when, when, when x equals 10, what is dv dx? If you plug in 10 in for x here, you get 300 square inches. So when you plug in 300 square inches for dv dx and you plug in 4 inches uh, per minute for dx dt, simplify, final answer, 1200 cubic inches per minute. Bye-bye.